interesting. All right, Atlanta, Georgia, Hotlanta. Used to be one of my favorite towns. Enjoyed going there, Buckhead, Phipps Plaza Mall, uh, Lennox across the street. Lots and lots of fun. However, crime has engulfed the city, and I'm not going back, sorry. Um, now, this was just a nightmare. My goodness gracious, there was a shooting in, I believe, a primarily black neighborhood, and they wouldn't let a white cop investigate or help. Watch. You hear that? No white cops. Get your white face out of here. This is America. This is not America. This is a cruel perversion that's happened to America. It goes on. All right. I actually remember Mr. Rogers. Remember policemen or my friends and whatever happened in those days. Now, the Black Lives Matter t-shirt person says, leave them alone at the end, which I think is semi-decent, but I can't tell what side she was on. And you know what? I can't actually totally blame the people who were harassing that cop. It's not, it's not really all on them. What do they watch on TV? Do they catch any mainstream media? It's really their fault. Watch. Police are supposed to protect and serve, but it's clear that they are protecting the beneficiaries of inherent racist policies. And of course, cities have to end the racist policing of black communities. That's where we all started. How about community, real community policing, as opposed to suppression and racist policing? Whether okay. some policing is racist in its intent or in its impact. Absolutely. What I do believe that there are aspects of the criminal justice system that are, you know, systemically racist. <laughs> Thank you, Officer Fanone, for nothing. Um, you listen to that stuff? Day in and day out, it's kind of, yeah, it's permeated society. And that poor cop on the beat has to deal with this, these toxic lies. All right, Gavin Newsom, uh, the governor of California, made a pick for U.S. Senator, and her name is uh, something Butler. Butler is her name, never held elective office, but he made good on his pledge. Kind of bizarre pledge to pick, not the best person, but to pick a black woman. Maybe she's the best person, but he kind of confused the issue by insisting all along that it be a specific gender and race. It would be a, essentially a caretaker, an African-American woman. Uh, we hope we never have to make this decision, but I, I, I abide by what I've said very publicly on a consistent basis, yes. If, in fact, Dianne Feinstein uh, were to retire, uh, will you nominate an African-American woman um, to restore the seat that Kamala Harris is no longer in the United States Senate? And do you have a name in mind? I have multiple names yes in yes mind. Yes no. We have multiple names in mind, and the answer is yes. This sounds like a good thing to do in liberal circles, but he's actually, it's a selfish move on his own part, right? I mean, potentially, I don't see the world this way, but identity politics, right? Maybe he doesn't want another white, tall, skinny man with great hair to be a United States senator. That could be a threat to him. I have a feeling part of why he picked Ms. Butler, she won't be a threat to him politically. Let's go through her resume. Not much of one, all right? Uh, I'm not even sure if she lives in California. Apparently, she lives in Maryland. Never held elective office. Nobody, and I mean nobody, knows who she is. Clever move. Pretty sneaky there, Gavin. Let's see what happens next. All right. Ooh, uh, Merrick Garland. Some fake tears from Merrick Garland. Watch. American people must protect each other. 
they must ensure that they treat each other with civility and kindness, listen to opposing views, argue as vociferously as they want, but refrain from violence. For my own family who, who uh, fled uh, religious persecution in Europe, um, and some members who did not uh, survive. survive when they got to the United States. The United States protected It guaranteed uh, that they could practice their religion, that they could vote, they could do all the things they thought a democracy would provide. Um, that's the difference between this country and many other countries. And it's my responsibility, it's the Justice Department's responsibility to ensure that that difference continues, that we protect each other. All right. Some of that's beautiful, but it's also part of a PR push, right, to make his persecution of January Sixers seem somehow righteous and him seem somehow more sympathetic. But remember this, the pressure on Merrick Garland, the most intense pressure, hasn't come from MAGA. It's actually come from the left. They've been furious with him for a long time. They think they sh he should have moved on indicting Trump like in January of 2021. He should have done it first. And they have let it be known. And Merrick Garland felt the heat for a long time. Why is Merrick Garland allowing this nonsense to continue? <laughs> he's such a he, he's such an institutionalist that maybe he's too afraid to go after Trump. Merrick Garland, if you indict Trump, you'll be my person of the year, yeah. of the decade. The current Justice Department under Merrick Garland needs to do more. There's more Garland can do. You see, I'm telling you, and you should see what they're saying on the blogs and on Twitter about Merrick Garland. That's why he's kind of cracking. Anyway, thank you for listening, and we'll be right back.